Hello there, and thank you for watching this recording. This is a recording of a presentation that I gave at uh, IBC in Amsterdam in September 2013. Um, obviously, I've had to edit all of the jokes out uh, because nobody's going to laugh at them. But as you can see, my title is Internet versus Broadcast. And a lot of the debate around radio platforms, particularly in the US, is based on this fight between competing ways of getting our content to the audience, which will win and which will lose. Um, three years ago I went to my first NAB conference in Las Vegas and I was completely taken back by the debate because it's not really one that we've had in the UK, but this internet versus broadcast debate in the US continues on blogs and in industry magazines as well. And never mind that the US media marketplace is completely different to Europe, it's a debate that I here copied in some parts of Europe as well. Internet versus broadcast. I think it's a binary argument. I don't believe it's the right argument to have because a binary argument like this really only works if the correct answer is one or the other. Uh, let me give you a few examples from the point of view of consumers. Uh, Betamax versus VHS. Uh, we know the answer here. This was a typical binary uh, conversation. VHS won even though VHS was technically inferior, it put Betamax uh, out of business in terms of consumers. Uh, how about HD DVD versus Blu-ray? Uh, we know the answer here too. HD DVD is no more uh, and Blu-ray is the uh, high definition uh, pre-recorded uh, thing of choice. Um, here are a couple more though. DAT versus Minidisc. Not really a binary conversation because both of them disappeared. New technology made both of these redundant um, because the industry was too busy inventing a new format but ignoring what consumers were telling them. That really isn't a future that we want for radio, is it? Um, here's another one. AM versus FM. Well, what do you know? For the last 30 years, both of these transmission technologies have happily lived side by side in most countries. In Australia, the US or Canada, many of the market leaders are AM radio stations and half the top 10 billing radio stations in the US broadcast primarily on AM. So FM and AM actually both have their merits. AM travels further, it's more robust. Uh, FM sounds better, it's easier to put into more devices. Both are great at reaching audiences, that's the important thing. So far from being a binary argument, the radio industry has had multi-platform radio for many years. Multi-platform radio is where broadcasters are on more than one platform and cherry-pick a choice of the right platform for the right audiences. I'll give you one example from the UK. This is a dance radio station called KISS. Well, it launched two new radio stations recently, KISStory uh, and KISS Fresh. Now, they launched these radio stations primarily onto DTT, onto the television platform. Uh, and you can tune into these radio stations uh, on uh, TV sets uh, across the UK. Uh, why did they do this? Well, their audiences are young, they don't drive, uh, they probably live with their parents, but they do have a television in their room, but they probably don't have a radio. And now, yes, they also stream online as well, but stations aimed at this audience do significantly better on TV broadcast platforms than, on, on, than online. Um, let me give you another example. This is um, still from the UK, I'm afraid. This is an AM radio station, not that it matters much. BBC Radio 5 Live. And here's a chart showing total time spent with each different platform. So you can see AM broadcast at the top, then DAB underneath, growing not quite as fast as anybody really wants. Um, then radio through the TV, uh, the um, orangey colour, and then internet the grey uh, right at the bottom. Internet here is at about 5% or so of total time spent listening. And look where broadcast is. So if we're going to have an argument about internet versus broadcast, well, it's very clear who the winner already is. From graphs like this, where over 90% of time spent listening is to broadcast on whatever platform. The evidence is that audiences continue listening to broadcast, yet the internet still brings in an important audience. And it would be a brave broadcaster indeed who would turn the internet stream off, in spite of it clearly being so unpopular. For audiences, broadcast is still an attractive option, even when you have internet on the same device. Um, this was a test that a Norwegian Gunnar Garfors uh, did uh, fairly recently. He tuned into internet radio on this um, Android uh, phone and he streamed 6 hours 53 minutes out of the battery uh, over 3G before it turned itself off. Now tuning into FM radio on the same phone gave him 48 hours on the same battery charge. So in terms of battery life, broadcast is clearly better, seven times better than streaming. But again, nobody's advocating switching off internet streaming because that would be silly. 
Uh, the research that I've done seems to show that some of the best performing internet radio apps on mobile phones have two characteristics. Uh, we don't use these internet radio apps when mobile, actually. Um, mostly we use them on Wi-Fi. Secondly, we don't actually use them very much. The average session duration for an internet radio app, according to three separate app developers I've spoken to, is 12 minutes. The average time they get used, according to a number of broadcasters I've chatted to, is about twice a week. So in the European marketplace, at least, internet radio apps are not delivering audiences in any substantial way. But again, I'm not telling you to stop wasting your time with internet radio apps. Uh, who am I to talk? After all, I launched the world's first back in March 2005. You should and you must be on the mobile platform. But for broadcasters, economically there's no question that broadcast is better than internet for mass market audiences. It's a real bargain to broadcast to hundreds of thousands of people in comparison to using the internet to do so. There's a clear tipping point, and it's not very high, where internet becomes more expensive than FM or DAB plus broadcasting. So put simply, if you want to reach enough people for advertisers to take a serious interest in you, it's really hard to reach uh, to achieve that reach online without incurring serious costs. But I'd never tell you to never use the internet uh, to broadcast online. Because just as AM and FM work together, so does broadcast and internet. Uh, let me give you a few examples. Let's firstly go to Austria. Uh, this is Kronerhit, the largest commercial radio station there. It operates a great FM radio station. It also streams online, of course, but online it also offers a variety of different additional radio stations that you can see on the left here aimed at particular demographics, uh, as well as Krona Hit Select on the right. Uh, this is a service that offers personalised radio streams and uh, indeed um, you can tune into any old song uh, that you really want to. Now for Krona Hit to offer additional radio stations in Austria would be impossible without the internet or without DAB+, but personalised radio streams are impossible on any broadcast platform. So Krona Hit is using new platforms here to grow its business. It's not internet versus broadcast, it's internet and broadcast. And let's go to Australia. Uh, Austria and Australia, of course, very easy to, easy to mix up. Um, here in Australia, Southern Cross Austereo, um, they're the, a big radio company. They operate leading FM stations in many markets and in the capital cities, also broadcasting additional radio stations on DAB+. But it also broadcasts, um, it also operates this service called Songle. Uh, Songle you can see on the uh, iPhone uh, underneath here. Um, this is a service that offers personalised radio and a full music service, uh, as well as radio stations. And again, this kind of thing is only possible on the internet, really. So Osterio are using new platforms to grow its business and to protect itself against new entrants. It's not internet versus broadcast, it's internet and broadcast. Uh, here's another example. In Turkey, Spectrum Media. Um, they run a bunch of FM radio stations. Now, online they have even more stations as well as a cloud-based TV network, a um, music service as well as ticket sales and a bunch of other things. Um, all a great service called Carnival. But when you tune into their radio stations online, you'll hear something quite interesting. Because the advertising is targeted to you. It stands to reason if you're an 18-year-old boy, you'll want different advertising to a 50-year-old woman. And it's also obvious that if you're tuned in online, you can ask audiences to click a banner rather than phone a, f a telephone number. Personalised radio advertising clearly only works when you have an online connection, when the broadcaster knows who you are and doesn't just base audiences on an average age or demographic. Spectrum are using the internet here to grow existing businesses and start new ones. And once more, it's not internet versus broadcast, it's internet and broadcast. Uh, finally, uh, let's have a look at Entercom, uh, this uh, nice looking chap. Um, is working for um, a very large radio group. Uh, Entercom use uh, Triton Digital to monetize radio online using quite a clever plan. They use behavioral targeting. So if I know that somebody has just booked a flight to New York, now will be a good time to talk to them about hotels in New York as well. And behavioral targeting uh, means no registration, just automatically targeted ads for anybody who tunes in based on what websites they visit, where they are in the country, uh, what device they're tuning in on, and all that kind of thing. Uh, this kind of thing is impossible on broadcast, but it works really well online. 
Yet Entercom continues broadcasting these same radio stations on FM and AM, of course, as well, because it's not internet versus broadcast, it's internet and broadcast. But so far, these are examples that use the internet separately from broadcast. And we're kind of quite used to internet being separate from broadcast on a typical radio as well. Um, this is one where you need to select whether you want to tune into the internet or FM or DAB. Uh, the presets are different for each. The user experience is different on each as well. It's almost as if you had three different radios sharing the same loudspeaker. And I think we need to get a little bit better at our user experience in terms of radio. The TV companies already have. And this is a t typical satellite receiver. Um, uh, it's, this is Sky in the UK. You might also recognize it from Foxtel uh, in Australia, DirecTV in the US. Uh, and this is giving me a simple, straightforward channel list. This screen shows channels that are free. The screen is also showing channels that are paid for, channels using two different encoding algorithms, channels that come from three different satellites in two different places in the sky, all that complexity nicely hidden from the user because uh, we don't care. And this is different broadcasting technologies working together to achieve a great user experience. And this is a number, uh, another uh, television platform, UView. Uh, and again, I have a simple, straightforward channel list here. Um, but this screen is showing channels from my TV antenna, as well as channels delivered over the internet. And the APG shows programs that are on now, which I can tune into uh, on broadcast, and programs that I've missed, which I can watch on demand online or off the inbuilt hard drive. Again, all of that complexity hidden from the user. And this is different broadcast technologies working together to achieve a great user experience. So this isn't internet versus broadcast. This is a hybrid experience of internet and broadcast. And we're beginning slowly to move into this world in radio uh, as well. Uh, to the US. This is an app called Next Radio. Uh, it's an app for selected Android phones and it looks like internet radio with buy now buttons and now playing information and full color artwork but it's using the FM radio inside the phone for the audio. So the audio comes from FM uh, good for battery, good for um, bandwidth and all that kind of stuff. The additional information is the only thing that's coming over the internet. Broadcast radio being used for what it's best at, the internet being used to make that experience better. So this isn't internet versus broadcast, this is internet and broadcast. Now this app is um, a proprietary one. That fits actually quite well with the US broadcast marketplace, maybe not uh, so much uh, in Europe. Um, it's owned by one company, it's on one app, on two phones, on one network. It's not yet in any radio receiver, but it's a great glimpse, I think, into the future. It does use some of the open technology from Radio DNS. And it's the Radio DNS project which should be your next stop as you look at how broadcast and radio work together. Truly, this is internet and broadcast. Uh, well worth having a peek at their website, which is radiodns.org. Um, let me give you a, one example of how that might work. With hybrid radio, car manufacturers can build radio sets that are, well, a little bit more exciting than this. Uh, this is a typical um, radio, um, smart new radio in the UK, and uh, you can see it's tuned in to 95.8, and amazingly we have a station name, Capital. Wow, there's a thrill. Um, if I connect this radio to the internet, then radio can look something like this. So I've got logos, I've got uh, images of who's currently playing, I've got more information uh, about what the program is and so on. And another thing that I can do with this, because this is talking uh, to uh, the internet and can find out more information about the radio station, um, this radio set can flick between FM, DAB and internet radio as you drive. So it keeps you tuned into your favorite radio station and keeps your hands on the wheel. It's better for the audience, better for the radio industry. It's very neat. So, is it a story of internet versus broadcast? I hope I've shown you that it isn't. Radio has a multi-platform future, but I hope radio has a future which also includes a better user experience for audiences, and that increasingly can be delivered by internet and broadcast working together. Thanks for watching. Cheers.